Moving swiftly on, the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11049 in the name of Christine Graham on Capital Credit Union Outpost Kennecook. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I now call on Ms Graham to open the debate. You have seven minutes or thereby, Ms Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy mm -hmm. Presiding Officer, and a much calmer Christine Graham and a calmer debate than in the last one. On 26 September, I attended the launch of a capital credit union outpost at Pennycook North Kirk Church. Sounds like something from the Wild West, but actually it's a partnership with credit union, a capital credit union in Edinburgh and other local denominations such as St Mungo's and St James the Les. It is volunteers drained by capital credit union who help run the operation and some may have made it through the storms uh, to be in the gallery tonight. The church provides the premises free of charge and Lothian Presbytery the furniture. And as you all know, because you're all informed in here, credit unions, and I'm a member of the Capital Credit Union, should have declared this sooner, is a financial cooperative which provides savings, loans, and a range of services to its member. And very importantly, it's non-profit making. It is owned and controlled by the members, a bit like the old trustee savings bank, Deputy Presiding Officer, which I think you might remember. Each member has one vote, and volunteer directors are elected from the membership by the membership for the membership. Membership of a credit union is based on a common bond. This can be working for a particular employer or in a particular industry or simply living or working in a specified geographical area, which could be as small as a village or as large as several local authority areas, or in this case, the size of Pennycook. Credit unions encourage all their members to save this is the key, save. Members can pay indirectly by payroll, deduction, or through benefit direct accounts, through retail payment networks, such as Paypoint or Payzone, by standing order, direct debit, or in cash at local offices and collection points. The credit union offers an affordable source of credit to their members, and there's the word affordable, another key word, not loans which lead the borrower into personal financial crisis, in fact, they're more responsible than so-called responsible banks were, or indeed perhaps still are. They are prepared to make the small sum, the shorter term loan, which most banks and building societies do not offer. Yet interest on credit union loans is always much lower than that charged by doorstep lenders and payday lenders. For example, home credit companies such as Provident openly advertise a typical APR of 399.7%, while payday lenders like Wonga.com can charge rates in the order of 5,853 APR2. Loan sharks can charge even more outrageous interest rates. And incidentally, interest for savers isn't that bad either. At the, nor at the North Cut, there was already established a food bank. And this is a further practical church initiative, introducing people to that old-fashioned way of saving and responsible borrowing and again, as I say, in a not-for-profit organisation. And the borrowing that is offered, the loans that are offered, are on the basis of what the person can afford, a proper look at what they can afford so they don't get into trouble. This initiative follows a special commission undertaken by the Church of Scotland in 2012, which called on the Kirk Society and our governments to take action on four priorities. Reducing inequality, ending poverty, ensuring sustainability and promoting mutuality. The important report encouraged the use of credit unions, commenting that with a new breed of pawn shops, payday loans, check cashing and so on, and in instant internet loans, it's easy for the unwary to fall into a debt trap. In 2014, the Church of Scotland General Assembly took up this theme and encouraged all members of the church to save and to borrow with a credit union. And I'd encourage all members here and outside to do just that. And that is what Pennycook through its churches is doing. The facility is open 10 to 12 noon on Mondays and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Fridays. The target was to sign up two new members to the Capital Credit Union each week. In the first few weeks of operation with the team of trained volunteers, they've actually signed up 28 new members exceeding that target. 
Each of these people will have opened a savings account with capital credit, and in addition, they've even had one loan taken out in that time. And to quote Reverend Ruth Halley of North Kirk, quote, joining a credit union is a great way to support ethical banking. Credit unions are responsible lenders and afford, offer affordable credit. They also encourage us to save as well as borrow, and as I've said before, not for profit. This can be of real benefit to all the people of Pennycook, and the more people who join, the greater that benefit will be. I've already joined, and I hope that everyone who lives or works here will join too, close quotes. As I've said, I'd encourage all members who are not yet a member of a credit union to do so. The interest is quite good in savings, and it's an ethical way to save and allows others to borrow responsibly. There's a good return in interest, as I've said, and better still, you've got this mutual funding for people who may not be able to access banks otherwise. So I very much congratulate on the church. I'm not a member of a church myself. I'm actually an atheist. Uh, but I have to say, this is where I like to see churches doing and putting their money where their mouth is. And I commend, very much commend the churches of Penny, who are doing just that practical work in the community, firstly through the food banks, now through having the Capital Credit Union outpost, encouraging people within the community and helping those who maybe need a little bit more help. So I wish the pilot well, and I look forward to localised credit union facilities being extended following in Penny Cook's footsteps. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. I now call on Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Kenny McCaskill. Four minutes or thereby, please, Mr Chisholm. This is time of year is a time for celebration, for being with family and friends and reflecting on the year gone by. It is also a time of increasing pressure to give gifts, to spend, to splash out on treats for those you care about. For many, it is a time of real stress as parents buckle under the weight of expectation and advertising to spend. For some, this time of year is no different to the rest of the year, a constant struggle to make ends meet. This is often the time when we see many people in Scotland turn to payday lenders and short-term solutions. That is why Christine's Graham motion today is so welcome. Credit unions provide saving accounts and a range of services, including a safe, reliable alternative to payday loans and their accompanying high sky interest rates, something that my colleague Kezia Dugdale has done so much to highlight over recent years. And I'm sure all in the chamber would commend this work. It helped to make a greater number of people aware not only of the danger of loan sharks, but also of the existing alternatives. Therefore, the piloting and possible expansion of capital credit union through the work of dedicated church volunteers is a very welcome development indeed, and the more awareness that we as a parliament can raise to this alternative, the better. Volunteers, as Christine Graham has uh, outlined at Pennycook North Church, give their time to run a satellite office for Capital Credit Union, where local people can find out about saving and borrowing with Capital Credit Union and also apply to join. The Credit Union office is staffed by volunteers from Pennycook North Kirk, St Mungo's and St James the Less, all of whom have been fully trained by Capital in a joint endeavour to offer fair and affordable savings and loans to church members and others in the community. Traditionally, credit unions have been small, non-profit financial organisations set up by members with something in common to benefit their community. That common factor may be living in the same town, working in the same industry, or belonging to a particular trade union. And can I mention here the local North Edinburgh uh, credit union, which serves the North Edinburgh part of my constituency, but clearly the capital credit union serves my constituents and people in a much wider area. And of course, the advantage of a larger credit union such as capital is it is more able to give the kind of loans that are an alternative uh, to payday loans. For example, it can give fast track loans of £500 to anyone uh, who joins, uh, uh, joins the credit uh, union. And of course, that uh, is at a rate of interest which is considerably less than even the capped uh, payday loans that we have, uh, that have been announced recently. Uh, the most extensive credit union loan will still charge eight times less interest than payday loans at their new cap. And uh, I hope, in fact, that that uh, cap will be considerably reduced because while it was a step forward, clearly there's a long way uh, to go. Um, generally, to be part of a credit union, with, uh, as we've heard, you need to share a common bond uh, with other members. This common bond means those who pay in also have a say in the running of the credit union, so it is genuinely rooted in shared interest uh, and community. It is part of the, credit, uh, the philosophy of credit unions. Everyone pays a small amount in to save for a rainy day, and everyone within the community gets the safety net, the safety net they need in the full knowledge that they have a major role in the functioning of the union. 
Now, the more people who start to use credit unions, the better. And credit unions continue to call for measures to boost uh, membership. And I would welcome uh, any, um, uh, uh, many measures, uh, any policies that the government can bring forward uh, to promote credit union uh, membership. For example, the credit unions are saying they would like uh, the public sector to encourage all employees to join a, a credit union. And there are various ways they could do that. Another demand uh, from the credit union mo movement is that there should be a guaranteed loan fund for the purposes of lending by credit unions. And again, I would welcome the Minister's uh, comments on that. I think it would be a form uh, of preventative spend in terms of uh, uh, stopping people getting into the kinds of difficulty they get with payday uh, loans. So I think this is a, a great uh, credit unions are an absolutely uh, a great institution that I have admired for a long time and at a time of immense distrust in the integrity of those who guide our financial systems. Credit unions, I believe, offer an ethical breath of fresh air. Many thanks. And I now call on Kenny McCaskill to be followed by Cameron Buchanan. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too would like to record my thanks both to Christine Graham for raising this issue. It has been raised in Parliament before, but it's right, not just because of the time of year, as Malcolm Chisholm has said, but because the issue itself is important and we should continue to drive that home and indeed that the Government will respond and show what further commitment they are making to what has already been given. It is important that we should recall both the general and the specific matters here. It is important to pay tribute to the local credit union that Christine Graham has been referring to, to those who work within it and those who volunteer to it. But indeed, the specific issue that uh, both Christine Graham and Malcolm Chisholm commented on. Uh, I am also, I should declare, a member of a credit union, the Castle Credit Union that was originally Craig Miller. Uh, it serves both its area and now the enlarged area as it's seen the benefit of getting in a greater uh, share and greater uh, capital and membership. But again, I think there's uh, thanks owed to two aspects and two uh, sections there. First of all, there's the thanks that go to those involved in credit unions per se, but equally to those who volunteer and the specific mention made towards the churches. Uh, sometimes in debates in this chamber, people can view with some scepticism those who volunteer from the faith communities. I have to share, I say I share with uh, Christine Graham's view that whether people volunteer from the secular or indeed the faith aspects of our society, we should welcome uh, those who give and those who contribute. And indeed, I think as we face another swathe of churches in closing in my own constituency and indeed it elsewhere. We may very well rue the day that the opportunities that were offered in various communities, not simply by the church building, but by the church hall and those who participated in it, uh, will be lost to our communities. But there are two particular aspects I want to comment on. Firstly, the good work that is done uh, by credit unions. They do operate often in areas where there are no banking opportunities, and Craig Miller is a clear example. It is not the size that the community once was, and to be fair, there once was a TSB a bank located there, uh, but now there are no banking opportunities, uh, and the same applies in many peripheral and sometimes urban areas within Scotland. Uh, banks going through a, a raft of closures, as they see, and understandably, people such as myself do internet banking, but the issue of access to funds and access to banks in many uh, areas of deprivation was and remains a significant problem and a significant challenge. And it does appear to me that the solution is through the use of credit unions, both in Craig Miller, the outreach work done, testified to by Christine Graham and Malcolm Chisholm, seen in places like Gilmont and myself in my own constituency, where again, access to France is difficult. But it's also, I think, the opportunity, because it's the opportunity that credit unions offer, not simply to deal with austerity and those who are in uh, deprivation and face challenges and cannot get access to finance, because credit unions are not simply for those who are in deprivation or in perhaps the lower, uh, less well-off aspects of our society. They do offer opportunities, which I and others have mentioned take up. But in particular, I'd like to put on record the good work done by the Police Credit Union, which I think touches upon the points made by Malcolm Chisholm. Uh, credit unions are there for all. If it can be done when people sign up for the police, and this is what happens, members are encouraged when they join the police service to join the police credit union. It can be of benefit to them. Young men or women may find themselves posted to a 
police station that is distant from where they live. They may have to buy a car. It may be that the best way to obtain that vehicle to be able to carry out their service and their work would be through the police credit union. So yes, it is an opportunity to address austerity, but it's also something that should be done as a matter of course, whether you're an MSP, whether you're in the public sector or whether you're in the private sector. Credit unions have so much to offer, not simply in Pennycook, but throughout the whole of Scotland. Thank you very much. And I now call on Cameron Buchanan to be followed by John Wilson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to start by saying that I too commend Capital Credit Union on starting an outpost in Pennycook, North Kirk, and welcome Ms Graham's motion, particularly as I'm for once agreeing with her. Access to credit at reasonable rates can be so important to many people, and responsible provision of it can make such a difference. I know this is particularly true where credit unions have local communities' interests at heart, and at risk of repeating everybody, what everybody else has said, we've all heard the horror stories about payday lenders and the huge rates that they can charge, how people get trapped into this. Credit unions send out a much-needed message that this is not the only option. Furthermore, I hope we can all applaud the efforts of the Church of Scotland and the Episcopalian Church in working to make this outpost a reality. Credit unions, such as the new branch at Pennycook North Kirk, play an important role in Scotland, with over 300,000 members nationwide. This large figure translates into about one in every 20 Scots. As well as in Pennycook, credit unions exist across the country, as you've heard, in North Edinburgh Credit Union and the first Scottish University Credit Union. There are many others. The importance of their role is actually magnified considerably by the comparison with payday lenders. These companies, which have been known to charge over 5,000% APR, have led many people into financial difficulties, unwittingly and unwillingly, that are, and they're very, very difficult to get out of. Indeed, the Citizens Advice Bureau in Scotland report that they deal with over 100 cases involving payday loans every single week. A crucial point here, I feel, is that it is far better and easier to deal with financial difficulties by avoiding escalating debt in the first place. However, the solution there is not simply to ban loans, this is, this is wrong, but rather to make them more affordable. An outright ban on payday lending would not be a useful intervention rather overcoming them competitively by undercutting them on interest rates. That is practical and sustainable solution. This, thankfully, is where the credit unions have stepped in and encouraged, in encouraging people to save, which is the key word, as has already been mentioned. With credit unions restricted by law to lend at a maximum of 26.8% APR, they do indeed undercut payday lenders by some considerable and significant margin. They are beating them, in fact, at their own game. This, is, I think, is all good news for members of the public. But it doesn't come easily and relies on volunteers to do an awful lot of the work. We should, of course, all recognise the amount of effort and time invested by various people in credit unions, both specifically at Pennycook North Kirk and in the wider sector. In Pennycook, the new branch will be located rent-free in Pennycook North Kirk, furnished by the Lothian, Lothian Presbytery and staffed by church volunteers from, Pen from the church, St Mungo's and St James the Less, all of whom have been fully trained by capital. This shows just how much has been freely given in order to operate the credit union, and all involved should be applauded loudly. It appears that without this level of voluntary contribution, such credit unions would not be able to offer the relatively low rates of interest that they can at the moment. Since being able to undercut payday lenders on interest rate is central to outmoving them as lenders, we cannot overstate the importance of these voluntary contributors. It would appear that there's a lesson here when we are faced with some operators, in this case payday lenders of course, that they are not acting in the consumer's best interests. The solution in, these cases, in, this, in this case may not be a severe government legislation against them, but rather a private or third sector initiative to outcompete them. The demand and supply can be moved to responsible suppliers rather than outlawed altogether. According to Presiding Officer, I hope that the launching of a capital credit union outpost at Pennycook North Kirk can be commended by us all. The huge amount of time and effort put in by the local volunteers will enable the outpost to compete with payday lenders and in doing so provide a great service to the local community. Their example is one that has demonstrated how communities can work together to deliver local services, as well as highlighting how the problems arising from questionable lenders can be overcome by outcompeting rather than outlawing them. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I now call on John Wilson, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I offer my congratulations to Christine Graham for uh, moving this member's debate tonight. I think, as others have said, it's a very timely debate uh, in relation to the credit union movement, as well as uh, the time of year coming up to Christmas, which I'll expand on later. 
We almost uh, forget the role that the Church of Scotland played at the General Assembly in 2010, when it actually established uh, the Special Commission on the Purpose of Economic Activity, which resulted in the report that was produced in 2012, uh, commissioned chaired by Professor Charles Munn, who had clearly identified that the Church could play a role in promoting greater economic activity within communities. And some of the suggestions made by Professor Munn we clearly see in the motion tonight because it's quite clearly outlined the church had resources, both in people and facilities, that they should be offering to credit unions and other community organisations to ensure they could promote the credit union movement and greater economic activity in areas where they had a presence. And I'm glad to see that in terms of the Pennycook area, church members and the churches have taken that on board and taken that to heart. And hopefully we will see that type of development taking place throughout Scotland, that other churches will get involved and will actually uh, carry out this good work that was suggested uh, firstly by Professor Munn. The examples I wanted to allude to, uh, presiding officer, is that we talk about payday lenders and we talk about you know, the online payday lenders with the 278% APR, or as Christine Graham mentioned herself, Wonga, which uh, actually promotes one at 1,538% APR. But what we forget is some of the high street stores that offer goods at double the value. And I took two examples this afternoon. Uh, a PlayStation 4 in one high street store, if you buy it on an average store, you'd get it for £400. In a particular high street store, it's £636. And they claim an APR of 94.7%. But the total price paid for something that you could buy for £400 is £1,300. That's three times more than what you could purchase if you were buying it cash. An Xbox One console with a game, approximately £370. The same high street store selling at £738.87 with the 94.7% APR, total payable, £1,508. These are the types of things that are happening in many communities throughout Scotland, where parents are under pressure to buy the latest games or the latest consoles, and people are feeding off that deprivation. They're feeding off those individuals that are trying to deliver, and they're making profit out of that. The issue for us all we have to bear in mind as we want to see a fairer society. And credit unions aren't, as many have described, the poor man's bank. I think Kenny McCaskill quite rightly outlined that some of the most successful credit unions are the ones who can draw down the salaried the staff that contribute to those and who are now offering mortgages to their members. So the reality is we need to make sure that credit unions have a balance of those who are involved and they can actually get people actively involved across society. The only dissenting note I'd make, presiding officer, is that while I welcome capital credit unions move out to peripheral areas and expanding, I wish they would speak to the existing credit unions within those areas that they're expanding to. Uh, I received an email two weeks ago from a credit union who had more or less raised a concern that capital union, credit union, because of the size and the, the savings that they have, can actually undercut some of the smaller existing credit unions. So I'd make the plea, speak to the existing credit unions in an area. If there's no existing credit union there, by all means, go in and establish a credit union outpost. But clearly, consult with, discuss with, and involve existing credit unions in areas and lastly, uh, presiding officer, I welcome the work that's been done by the Scottish Government in the past, particularly the 12 Days of Debtmas campaign this time last year. And I look forward to the work that's going to be taken forward by the Scottish Government in the future to not only promote, but to enhance the role of credit unions in society today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. I now call on Minister Margaret Burgess to make the closing speech on behalf of the Government, please. 
Presiding officer, I'd also like to thank Christine Graham for securing the debate on this issue of credit unions, which is something I think we all agree is very important. And I'd also like to express my thanks and congratulations to everyone who has invested their time and energy in making the new capital credit union outpost in Pennycook a reality. And I'm delighted to see how actively engaged the church is with the credit union movement and to see that they are working together like this to help their communities. And I'm sure I speak for everyone in the chamber when I say that I hope the Pennycook pilot will be a resounding success and that we will see similar partnerships rolled out elsewhere. All across the country, there are people interested in working together to bring ethical, affordable financial services and products into the heart of their communities. And we should all do what we can to bring people together and support them in their endeavors. And it doesn't need to be churches, any organization or group with space and a willing group of volunteers could develop similar partnerships. The Scottish Government's support for the Pennycook pilot forms part of our wider work to promote credit unions. This work recognises the significant contribution that credit unions make to the financial landscape in Scotland, providing financial services and products to a wide range of customers, often the most financially vulnerable or excluded. But I think that Malcolm um, Chisholm and Ken McCaskill and now John Wilson have made the point credit unions are not just and exclusively for those on low incomes. They absolutely understand they need to have people from across society in their membership. But very often it's the people on the low income who are bearing the brunt of changes to the welfare system and no increase in their income. And credit unions can play a role here too. Some credit unions are actively delivering new services to help those affected by welfare changes and I welcome that and in my own area I know for example the First Alliance Credit Union uh, has a relationship with the six housing associations in the area and those that are in the housing association are being encouraged to join the local credit union, union and I think that's a very good move. As part of the, the Scottish Government support we've been working with the private and public sector to raise awareness of the benefits of credit union membership. And I think we've heard very much from all of the speakers tonight just how, uh, what the benefits are of being the member of a credit union. And in particular, we've been encouraging the take up of payroll de deduction schemes, which I think Malcolm Chisholm talked about, including for Scottish Government and Scottish, Scottish Parliament employees. We've also been working closely with schools to improve financial education and to promote credit unions as a viable means to save. And there's been significant activity to promote credit unions, such as was mentioned by John Wilson, the accountant in bankruptcy's 12 Days of Debt Mass campaign last year. And I'm sure that we all share the concern at reports of spiralling personal debt as a result of high cost loans. The Scottish Government doesn't have the power to regulate in this area, which is something I would very much like to see change. But until that day comes, I want to assure you that we're doing everything we can to bring about the changes we can, so far as devolved legislation allows. And the Scottish Government has been pressing for a cap on payday loans. And I was thinking about preparing for this debate tonight. My first uh, members debate in this chamber as a backbencher in March 2012 was about payday loans and one of the things I called for then was the cap um, to cap the, the interest in payday loans and we now see a cap being introduced in January but I think the action is too little and too late and like Malcolm Chisholm the pro I agree the proposed cap is still too high and Fergus Ewing the Minister for Energy Enterprise and Tour Tourism will continue to urge the financial services to look at this again and we're pleased to see that the payday lending industry has been sub subjected to better, greater regulation, but more work is needed. And linked to our work to promote credit unions, last week, um, my colleague Fergus Ewing launched the new Financial Health Service for Scotland website. And this website aims to help people build their financial resilience and to help prevent repeated debt problems. It brings together information including debt advice, employability, and access to ethical and affordable lending, such as credit unions. The aim is to provide a central hub, allowing people to find trustworthy organisations in one place to help them with their financial queries or difficulties. 
To discuss what more we can do to promote credit unions, the Scottish Government has set up a credit union working group chaired by Fergus Ewing. The group is looking at ways to ensure that we have a secure, thriving and sustainable credit union sector in Scotland, that credit unions have a wide and varied customer base and that the financial vulnerable financially vulnerable are supported by having alternatives to high cost lending and again I, would be, I was looking back at what I said in 2012 and, and at that time I said that I would like to see credit unions as being the first um, resort in the high street for saving and affordable borrowing that's what we should be aiming for the first port of call the working group's first meeting um, was held on the 9th of October and the group will meet again early in the new year and has already highlighted a range of areas that we can take forward. For example, encouraging employers to link with credit unions to encourage save as you earn, and I think all members uh, ask for that. Presiding officer, today's debate has highlighted the vital role that credit unions can play and do play, and that the Pennicoot outpost is a great example that shows the desire within our communities for people to come together, work together, and make a difference to people and their communities. Thank you. Many thanks. And that concludes today's business. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.